The 29th Dirt Late Model Dream starts tonight, and although the entry list is big, there is one notable absence. We'll talk about that, plus Hunt the Front issues big penalties, and Hunter Schoenberg is looking for a ride. Let's go. It's Thursday, June 8th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. It's a crown jewel weekend with the 29th Dirt Late Model Dream at Eldora getting started tonight. Three nights of racing with Saturday Night's Big Show paying $129,000 to the winner. Thursday and Friday are full programs of split field action ending in twin 25 lap features that will pay $12,000 to win each. Results through the first two nights will set up Saturday's heat race starting lineups as is usual for these crown jewel weekends at Eldora. As of last night, we are at 89 cars pre-entered, but the track did share that there are some teams who are uh, on the property who did not pre-register for the Dream, so it sounds like maybe we could be into the 90s for car count, so plenty of guys there. Certainly not going to go through this entire list, but it's obviously stuffed with all of the best Dirt Lamb all teams from the two national tours and a ton of the best local and regional guys as well. If you want to see the full list, uh, if you're not watching the show, if you're uh, listening to the podcast version, you can find this full 89 car entry list over on uh, Eldora Speedway's social media accounts. One driver who is notably absent from this list is Scott Bloomquist. It'll be the first time in the event's history that Bloomer will not compete. He's been battling health issues. He had that numbness in his right leg and foot that forced him to withdraw from racing at Volusia way back in February. He was planning on having back surgery in the spring, but has not competed since then. Bloomer has eight Dirt Late Model Dream wins in his career, with the last coming in 2018. He hasn't won a big-time late model show, though, since September of 2020, when he won a World of Outlaws race at Thunder Mountain Speedway. At his best or not, it certainly won't be the same at Eldora with Bloomquist not racing. Remember, too, this week is the first time the signal stick ban is in effect at Eldora. Obviously, teams will still find ways to communicate with their drivers, just won't be with the sticks. Going back through recent history, Brandon Overton has won three straight dreams, including last year uh, and the double dreams we had in 2021. There was no dream winner in 2020. Brandon Shepard won the event in 2019. Overton also won the 51st World 100, and the only other driver to win a big event at Eldora in the previous few seasons is Jonathan Davenport. He bagged the 50th World 100, the Eldora Million, and the 52nd World 100. Those two lead all drivers in recent average finish with Overton at 3.5 and Davenport at 4.3. Other drivers with prelim wins include Greg Satterley, Bobby Pierce, Dale McDowell, Johnny Scott, Tim McCready, Chris Ferguson, Chris Madden, and Hudson O'Neill. Neither Overton or Davenport is really coming into Eldora as hot as they've been in the past seasons, but it's going to be tough, I think, to pick against them anyway. Davenport looked resurgent, winning two of three nights at Wheeland here not uh, more than a couple of weeks ago. And Overton has been consistent, hanging around in third in the Lucas standings. Ricky Thorne Jr. has been scalding hot as of late, but his past results at Eldora are mixed. He's got just four top fives in 11 starts going back the last few years. One driver I would not count out here is Bobby Pierce. He obviously knows how to get around Eldora and has been very good with that Longhorn in 2023. And don't forget, if you're setting those dirt draft lineups for the weekend or doing other fantasy or picks or bets, uh, I've got Eldora special uh, event results plus both national tour results over in the database at dirttracker.com slash analytics. The work is all done for you. You just have to click through it all. All the stats, results, driver pages, driver comparisons, all that stuff is available over there. Uh, some stuff is free. Some stuff you can get with a subscription to Dirt Tracker Plus. You can try a month for just $4.99. Now drop me a comment. Let me know who you are putting your money on this weekend. Hot laps are scheduled for 6.30 local time tonight. You can watch live on Flow Racing if you are not headed for Rossburg. One late model news item from yesterday that is probably having a very small impact on the dirt uh, entry or the dream, dirt late model dream entry list was the Hunt the Front series announcing they have suspended Garrett Smith and his owner slash father, Scott Smith. Scott uh, and any cars owned by him are suspended from the series indefinitely, with Hunt the Front also dropping a $3,000 fine on him. He cannot apply for reinstatement to race with the series until a year from the incident date, which goes back to, I believe, June 3rd uh, at Cochrane Motor Speedway. Garrett Smith has been suspended for 90 days from the Hunt the Front events. On top of that, because this series is dirt car sanctioned, this, uh, these penalties also apply to any dirt car or world racing group events. Obviously, that means World of Outlaws events, Summer Nationals, would also mean this weekend's dream as uh, the dream is dirt car sanctioned. According to a release from the series, Scott Smith was warned at Cochrane about his actions following an incident where he entered another team's pit area to confront a crew member. 
Scott was then later upset about Garrett being sent to the rear in the future and both verbally and physically assaulted a series official and attempted to tear down their victory lane banner. Uh, Smith won the Dirt Track World Championship in 2022, Garrett Smith, that is, uh, but he has struggled this season. They'd initially planned on running with Lucas full-time, but we haven't seen them on the road since Farmer City a few weeks back. Speaking of Lucas, they will not be making up the historic 100 at West Virginia Motor Speedway. That was postponed over this past weekend because of rain. Fans with Saturday tickets will be refunded, and the 25 teams that were scheduled to start the feature will be paid $1,000 each for their participation. That's a nice move there. Lucas is back June 16th and 17th at Smoky Mountain Speedway. Uh, in motorsports, it's never too early uh, to start silly season. And with the uh, Ohio Sprint Speed Week bearing down on the all-star teams, one car will have a new driver coming up. Vermeer Motorsports announced last night that they had, quote, mutually agreed to part ways, unquote, with driver Hunter Schoenberg. They currently sit fourth in the all-star owner standings, 126 points behind Tyler Courtney and the Clausen Marshall team. Through the opening 17 races, Schoenberg had a win, five top fives, and nine top tens, and was most recently 10th and 12th at Dodge County and Plymouth. The team had been a tick, I think, a little bit of a tick off their 2022 pace in terms of things like average finish, but they had been victim to some bad luck. They got involved in some incidents. They had also planned on running full-time with high limit this season, but dropped off after the Wayne County race. Uh, they tore up some equipment during the All-Stars' recent Northeast swing and decided to pull back. In three high limit starts, Schoenberg had finishes of 14th, 17th, and 24th. And not that this should be really shocking to anybody who's been around racing for any amount of time, but thanks to some social media reaction last night, it appears as though this decision might not be as mutual as the team's release lets on. Casey Schumann, who used to be the World of Outlaws Late Model Series director, now runs I-70 Motorsports Park, posted that Schoenberg had just received a new shipment of fresh merch yesterday to restock his trailer after his motorhome and merch trailer caught fire back in early April. I doubt you load up on new merch in advance of Speed Week if you're ready to leave your current ride. Going forward with Schoenberg out, the Vermeer 55 will also probably be looking for a crew chief, I'd assume, since Clinton Boyles, who had been crew chief in the car, is Hunter's brother-in-law. Speed Week is set to uh, start tomorrow night at Attica, and there were rumors last night that Buddy Kofoid might be the target for Vermeer. And as of just a few minutes ago, the team did announce Kofoid as their new driver starting tomorrow night. That would mean Kofoid would not continue racing Indiana Midget Week, where he is the current week-long points leader after last night's race at Gas City. It would also mean that Bernie Stubjins Indy Race Part 71 is without a driver again, as Buddy had been driving that after getting bounced from the Crouch 11. Nothing in the release about a crew chief or schedule. I'm assuming they'll continue full-time with the All-Stars and fill in other races as they had been with Schoenberg in the seat. That Gas City show last night was won by Logan Seavey, who bounced back from late ignition issues while leading during the previous race at Circle City. Seavey and pole sitter Emerson Axum traded the lead officially five times during the 30-lapper, but it was probably a lot more than that. Seavey eventually ripped the top late to lead at the white flag and drive on to the victory. Wasn't easy, though, for him as the car was apparently missing a shock late and was quite the handful to drive. It was the first national midget win for CB since Turkey Night in 2021 and the first ever national midget win for Abacus Racing. Axum settled for second with Chase McDermott in third. Week-long and series uh, points leader Jacob Denny didn't have a great night, finishing down in 19th after starting second. It was Denny's first series finish outside the top eight all season. And although he's now lost the Midget Week points lead to Kofoid, he still leads the national standings with Jade Avedisian up to second. Tonight, Midget Week is headed for Lincoln Park, where Denny was the winner one year ago. Tanner Thorson won there in 2021. He has four straight top tens going right now. Can't get there. Flow Racing has live coverage. That's it for the show today. Make sure to stop by dirttracker.com slash watch tonight to see today's streaming schedule. You can also grab some Dirt Tracker merch over at shop.dirttracker.com. I've got hats there for 15 bucks. I've got shirts there for 15 bucks. That includes shipping. So what you see is what you pay. And I'll cover uh, uh, sales tax as well for all of the U.S. buyers. You can also get stickers. Uh, there's also some new stuff uh, on the way. So uh, stay tuned for that in the coming days and weeks. Hope you guys have a good Wednesday out or good Wednesday, good Thursday out there. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.